everyone. In the process of learning a subject, the most important and first step is to read the lesson, isn't it? In school, teacher makes us to read the lesson once before explaining. But at home, for the students who find it difficult to read the lesson and for the differently abled, we are introducing audio textbooks. These will help you to listen and read the lesson while going through the text. Our state government has provided us with PDF of the textbooks. So let us start reading the lesson. Third chapter in our English textbook is What can a dollar and eleven cents do? So shall we start reading? An eight-year-old child, Tess, heard her parents talking about her little brother, Andrew. All she knew was that Andrew was very sick and her parents did not have enough money for the treatment. They were moving into a smaller house because they could not afford to stay in the present house after paying the doctor's bills. He needed a costly surgery now and there was no one to loan them the money. So her parents lost their hope and gave up their efforts. When Tess heard her daddy say to her tearful mother, Only a miracle can save him now. She went to her room and pulled a jar of coins from a cupboard. She poured all the money out on the floor and counted it carefully, holding the jar tightly. She made her way to the medical store and placed it on the glass table. What do you want? asked the chemist. It's for my little brother, Tess answered. He is really, really sick and I want to buy a miracle. We don't sell miracles here, child. I am sorry, the chemist said, smiling sadly at the little girl. Listen, I have the money to pay for it. If it isn't enough, I can try and get some more. Just tell me how much it costs. At the shop, there was a well-dressed customer. He bent down and asked the little girl, What kind of miracle does your brother need? I don't know, she replied with her eyes welling up. He is really sick and mummy says he needs an operation. But my daddy can't pay for it. So I have brought my savings. How much do you have? asked the man. One dollar and eleven cents. But I can try and get some more. She answered, barely audible. Wonderful, smiled the man. A dollar and eleven cents, the exact price of a miracle for your little brother. He took her money in one hand and held her hand with the other. He said, take me to your home. I want to see your brother and meet your parents. Let's see if I have the kind of miracle he needs. That well-dressed man was Dr. Carlton Armstrong, a famous neurosurgeon. He had Andrew admitted to hospital where he operated on him without any charges. Within a few weeks, Andrew was back at home and doing well. That surgery, her mum whispered, was a real miracle. I wonder how much it would have cost. Tess smiled. She knew exactly how much the miracle cost. One dollar and eleven cents plus the love of a little child. The third poem in our English textbook is A Nation's Strength. The poet of this poem is Ralph Waldo Emerson. Now let us read the poem. Not gold but only men can make a people great and strong. Men who for truth and honor's sake stand fast and suffer long. Brave men who work while others sleep, who dare while others fly. They build a nation's pillars deep and lift them to the sky. Children, listen to the poem once again and read it on your own. Wilma Rudolph was born in a poor family in Tennessee. 
At the age of four, she had pneumonia with scarlet fever, which left her paralyzed with polio. She had to wear a brace, and the doctor said she would never put her foot on earth. But her mother encouraged her. She told Wilma that with God-given ability, persistence, and faith, she could do anything she wanted. Wilma said, I want to be the fastest woman runner in the world. At the age of nine, against the advice of the doctor, she removed the brace and took the first step. At the age of 13, she entered her first race and came way, way last. And then she entered her second and third and fourth races and came way, way last until a day came when she came in first. At the age of 15, she went to Tennessee State University where she met a coach by the name of Egg Temple. She told him, I want to be the fastest runner in the world. Temple said, with your spirit, nobody can stop you and besides, I'll help you. The day came when she was at the Olympics. And at the Olympics, you are matched with the best of the best. Hilma was matched against a woman named Uttahain, who had never been beaten. The first event was the 100 meter race. Hilma met Uttahain and won her first gold medal. The second event was the 200 meter race and Wilma met Uta a second time and won her second gold medal. The third event was the 400 meter relay and she was racing against Uta one more time. In the relay, the fastest person always runs the last lap and they both anchored their teams. The first three people ran and changed the baton easily. When it came to Wilma's turn, she dropped the baton. But Wilma saw Uta shoot up at the other end. She picked up the baton, ran like a machine, bet Uta a third time and won her third gold medal. It became a history that a paralytic woman became the fastest woman on this earth at the 1960 Olympics. Yeah.